with this. Take a, an example with a, a very straightforward two birth low profile Eldis Auto Quest 140. This is from 2010. And the reason I've chosen this is because it's got a stonking great amount of payload available. Um, even though it's only plated at 3,300 kilos, it's still got a lot of, of payload, which is rare. Um, but we're going to see how quickly this disappears. So it's two berth. Its length is 6.2 meters. It has a mass and running order of 2,710 kilos and a gross vehicle weight of 3,300 kilos. Hence, the maximum user payload following our little thing is GVW minus MRO, and that comes out to 590 kilos. Now let's see how fast that payload disappears. Right, you have a personal effects payload formula, which essentially, instead of going through all of the maths, essentially works out that anybody that gets in a motorhome is going to bring about 40 kilos worth of stuff with them. Food, clothes, stuff they want to do, um, laptops, etc. So if you work off that 40 kilos per person, there or thereabouts, you're not going to go far wrong. So we're going to break down this AutoQuest payload. 590 kilos maximum user payload is made up of the uh, essential habitation equipment, which is over and above the essential habitation equipment. That's 16 kilos. That could be the heavy duty battery or uh, something else that you've added in. Your personal effects payload, 83 kilos. And a conventional payload, i.e. your one passenger, which is rated at 75 kilos. So this leaves out of your 590, 416 kilos left, which seems enormous. Um, but remember now, we need to add the optional extras that you've decided that you want on your motor. So the optional extras that you've gone for. 20 kilos on top of the manufacturer's optional extras. Satellite system, 12 kilos, a solar panel of nine, pull out awning, 40 kilos. Now, bear in mind that the longer the awning, uh, the heavier it will be. Two beanie boxes, including the contents, 60 kilos. Let's say that's um, bits and pieces, engine soundproofing, 10 kilos, and a bike rack and two bikes. Well, that's 35 kilos. So in total, you've got 186 kilos worth of optional extras on your vehicle. Bear in mind that these are all unique for every single motorhome. There are no two motorhomes the same on the market um, because everybody puts different stuff in them. Um, and in truth, when they roll off their uh, production line, there are no two motorhomes that weigh the same, hence why they put in that plus or minus 5% margin of error. Um, let's see how quickly then this payload on the two birth auto quest disappears. Remember that you started with 590 kilos. Let's take out the optional equipment from the previous page of 186. Let's take away the uh, 10 kilos, the heavy duty battery weight over the mass and running order allowance or the second battery. If you want the driver weight above the mass and running order allowance, that's another I weigh 84 kilos. So let's add another nine kilos in there. And the passenger, instead of being 75 kilos, which is a standard allowance, is 66. And the personal effects of those two people are 83 kilos. So in total, We've we've put 350, 354 kilos in there. You take that away from the 590 that we had, that leaves 236 kilos, which is quite a bit to play with. And you must think, wow, that's great. However, Eldis sell this same base vehicle as a four berth with the extra seats and therefore with the passengers and the increased personal effects, it's overloaded by at least 50 kilos. Um, and we see this regularly. Uh, there are often two berth setups out there that are made into four berths and they'll be overweight by 150 kilos easily when they're fully loaded. So what do you do if you think you might be putting on too much weight from a vehicular point of view? Obviously, first thing you need to do is you need to go to a public weigh bridge in a fully laden capacity with full fuel, full water, your normal amount of passengers and you need to weigh the vehicle. We would recommend getting three weighings if you can. Um, an axle one, axle two and overall, but you need a minimum of two weighings. So the whole vehicle, so with both vehicles, both axles on the scales, uh, a single axle, you drive the front axle off the weigh bridge and weigh the back only. And then you can subtract the second figure from the first to work out the remaining axle weight. So it's pretty straightforward. Some weigh bridges will give you a printout of three weights. Some will only give you a printout of the gross vehicle weight and will write down what the individual axle weights are. 
but it is important for you to have this to hand so you know exactly what you have in that vehicle and what it weighs. Now you then need to compare the weighbridge weights to your plated weights. So the weight ticket says you are at 2,920. Well, your plated weight is 3.3, so you've got 380 kilos to spare. Brilliant. You can look at the axle weights. Now, bear in mind, every axle has a design weight, has a tolerance built into it. If you were to total up the two design weights on the right hand side here, the 1900 and the 1750, that would come to 3650, which is 350 kilos more than the maximum gross vehicle weight that you're allowed. So if you loaded up the axles to their full design weights, you'd be well over your gross vehicle weight. So you need to note that the axle capacity exceeds the gross vehicle weight and not go above the gross vehicle weight. We often see people actually just under their gross vehicle weight, but they've overloaded an axle. Um, it's very easily done. Um, what do you do if you find out that you're overloaded? Well, there's one way out. You remember that that mass and running order includes 90% full water, so you can drop your water. Um, if you only stay at campsites when you travel, then you can travel with little or no water and utilize the payload that you've freed up. Remember, one litre of water equals one kilo. So a, a 90 litre tank is 90 kilos. A 120 litre tank is 120 kilos. Um, you need to look for a solution to the legal issue by checking with a company with specialist knowledge to see if the vehicle can be uprated to a high gross vehicle weight if your licence allows you to drive over three and a half tonnes. Um, where mechanical improvements required, such a company as ours can advise and steer through the bureaucracy of the DVLA to obtain a new recognised plated weight. We have essentially spent the last 30 years testing every single brake testing and suspension testing every single new chassis cab that comes on the market because we are therefore are able to then uprate subsequent vehicles against that, that model report, that first vehicle that we tested, as long as you know, it matches that vehicle. Um, you do need to have a test behind every uprate that takes, takes place. It isn't just a, a, a paperwork exercise, as a lot of people seem to think that it is. There's a lot of testing that goes behind it. You might just get a paperwork uprate, but we've done the testing to prove that that vehicle can go higher and we are then able to issue you with a new converters plate at that new uh, uprated weight. Um, there's another option for you. If you can't uprate your motorhome for some reason, uh, and most can be uprated by three, 300, 350 kilos, you need to work out exactly how much you can carry by using our free load distribution analysis program on our website. Um, you need to get the, the figures from the Weybridge ticket that you had and the design weights off the plates. You enter this information into the programme and as you add your weights in, be it extra passengers, uh, bike rack on the back, it'll do a calculation to show you whether you've overloaded axle one, axle two or the gross vehicle weight. Uh, another option if you can't uprate for some people is to utilise what they're carrying in the gross train weight. So put a little trailer behind the motorhome and stick some weight in that because obviously you'd be legal to be pulling that um, uh, because you have a you have a gross train weight allowance of sometimes up to two tons above and beyond the gross vehicle weight. So it's worthwhile bearing in mind that if you can't stick it in the motorhome, uh, put it in the trailer behind. If you're taking motorbikes, don't put the motorbikes in the garage unit at the back. Put it on a trailer with on a dolly wheel behind the vehicle and it will go into your gross train weight, not your gross vehicle weight. Um, what are the pros and cons of uprating? Well, the things to consider. Obviously, when you uprate, you've got increased carrying capacity, uh, increased payload, which is great for your purposes. And you probably then are running legally as opposed to illegally. Um, you can get more wine in there, uh, more people potentially, uh, another bike rack. Um, the uprates that we do inside the summation of axle design weights, the pros of that is great because normally there's no design changes needed. There's no air suspension um, and it's a good increase, normally 250, 300 kilos. The cons is that your loading tolerance has been removed. So they're out of those axle weights. So your loading is critical. Uh, you cannot overload. Go if, it's, if your front axle is rated at 1850 and your rear axle is rated at 2000, You've uprated the vehicle to 3850 um, because it's on Alco. You cannot go above those figures on each axle. So therefore, it's really beholden upon you 
to know what you're sticking into your vehicle. We can do up rates above manufacturer's design weights. We've obviously uh, done testing uh, to for that. Um, it is costly to test anything from 15 to 20,000 pounds per vehicle. Um, there can be some warranty issues, but we've never really come across any at any point. Uh, and obviously you're making physical changes to the vehicle. So you'd be putting an air suspension on, possibly changing tires. That's obviously an increased expense. Um, the pros on this side, you've got greater loading ability and you can get some really high increases. We can take some three and a half ton motorhomes up to four tons for 250 without physical changes. Some of these will go from 3,500 to 4,500 with uh, change of tires uh, and, and uh, change, of, change of rims and air suspension and sometimes front axle coil upgrades as well. What are the other effects of uprating, i.e. on your license? Well, if you want to uprate a vehicle above three and a half tons and you don't have the license to drive over three and a half tons, you cannot uprate that vehicle. Um, before 1997, everybody that passed their test got an allowance essentially that allowed them to drive up to 7,500 kilos or 8,250 in combination with pulling something. Um, in 1997, that was changed and the, the category B license therefore only allowed people to drive up to three and a half tons with 750 kilos worth of towing behind, so 4,250 combined. But in 2013, that changed again. Uh, to restrict it straight down to 3,500, either as a gross vehicle weight or as a gross train weight. Um, people who pass their test now have literally um, no option to tow something behind a mo three and a half ton motorhome, which is a bit of a shame. Um, when you're driving in Europe, obviously, if you've gone above three and a half tons, you'll have some speed limit restrictions. So you'll probably come down by 10 uh, kilometers an hour across the board on every single road. And you could be subject to higher toll charges, though they don't have way bridges at the toll station. So they can't actually tell you. They'll look at your vehicle and still think you're a, uh, a category two or category four, um, class two or class four, dependent upon what sort of toll booth it is. Um, make sure that you do tell them when you are at the toll booth that you are uh, class four. Insurance. Anyway, that can can be affected in some circumstances, though not normally. You do need to tell your insurance company that you have uprated the revenue weight of the vehicle. Um, one of the plus pluses is obviously that your road tax goes down. When you go from private light goods to private HGV, your road tax goes down by £100 a year, which is just remarkable. Um, one of the downsides, obviously, is you potentially can reduce your towing. Uh, some vehicles, when we uprate them from three and a half tons and they did have a gross train weight of five five uh, if they go up to let's say three eight fifty the towing weight stays at five five so they've lost 350 kilos worth of towing and in some cases that can be quite critical so you do need to bear that in mind um and low emission zones we're obviously beholden to uh uh the uh, chancellor and he will want to take some money off you um, if you are in a vehicle above three and a half tons, there's a lot of low emission zones you can't go into or you will get charged a fortune. Um, there are people at low emission zones coming into potentially Birmingham and Manchester. So it might be something that you need to consider. Uh, and it's not just in the UK either. Uh, if you look there, we've got low emission zones um, EU as a website. You can check where they are in Europe so you can plan your journey accordingly. Um, in summary. If you're buying new from a dealer, right, check that there's sufficient payload for your needs, including all of the passengers and their personal effects. Check what's original spec and including the mass and running order and what comes out of your user payload for your extras that you've put in. Check that the mass and running order figure does include an allowance for material variation, i.e. that 5% or 3% plus or minus margin of error. Um, the actual mass and running order could be above the stated figure. Um, and the way and only way to do this is to ask for a weight ticket for that vehicle as it stands there before you drive it away. There are too many times I have seen people listen to the fudge that they've been given by a dealer. They get in the motorhome, they've spent 80 odd thousand pounds, they drive it down the road with no water, half a tank of fuel, just the two of them. They put it on a weigh bridge and they've got 50 kilos worth of payload left or in some cases, I've seen somebody drive away, an elderly couple in their 80s, drive away with a big new Heimer um, that they took it to a weigh bridge and it was 300 kilos overweight. 
already with nothing in it was not fit for purpose they did eventually get it taken back by the uh, by the dealer who subsequently put it on his website the following day and sold it again without changing without uprating without informing the people who were buying it that again it was overweight and that that to me is just sharp practice so it's really up to you caveat emptor to make sure you get a weight ticket for that vehicle as it stands before you drive it away go with them to the weighbridge i would recommend um because or take it out for a test drive and take it to a weighbridge it's really worthwhile doing it could save you tens of thousands of pounds if you're buying second hand um Ask to see the spec details as per so you can answer the payload questions as for the new units. But obviously, um, a lot of extras will probably have been added uh, by that person. As I said, no two motorhomes are the same. Therefore, you need to request a recent weight ticket. Go with him to the Weybridge and check that the plated gross vehicle weight and the axle limits match the written spec. So check, check the V5, check the plates um, and check the weight ticket. And check that weight ticket against the axle weights, you know, on the plate. All I can say is that you have to check your fully loaded motorhome on a weighbridge. Don't buy any new kit unless you consider the payload consequences. Um, it's not just the 40 kilo heavy awning that you've got, but it's the accumulation of a few extra kilos at every show. Uh, that you put in over three days and you get to the end of the year and nothing ever comes out of a motorhome. Things go into it. Very few things come out of it. And so I would guarantee you that this year your motorhome weighs more than it did last year and more than it did the year before. It's really important that you know what your vehicle weighs as it stands so that when you're driving down the road and you do get pulled by the DVSA or you do go over one of those way in motion pads that you're not worrying yourself mad thinking oh my god am i overweight am i going to get stopped am i going to get a ticket it's really important for you to know what your motorhome weighs go and get it weighed if you've got any problems come and see us we can help you we can give you some advice we're here to keep you safe and legal please do use a load distribution program uh, analysis and uh, and try and stay inside your axle weights and your gross vehicle weight peace of mind is priceless thanks ever so much for your time for listening i'm sorry i've bored you witless um sadly we don't have a stand when you can't ask me questions if you want to send me an email asking me a question my email address is richard at svtech.co.uk our telephone number is 01772 621 800 our offices uh, are being remotely manned uh, from people's homes um we are uh, still Uprating uh, on a daily basis, motorhomes, horse boxes, four by fours, minibuses. Please pass this presentation on to anybody that you think should listen to it. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. And may I just wish you all um, the very best. Please stay safe at this awful, awful time. Look after the people that you love. Look after your neighbours. Look after yourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>